In the early 2000s, there was a Russian game development studio called Avalanche Style Entertainment. They mostly made racing games. In 2005, they, weirdly enough, made a licensed Russian-only Postal 2 expansion published by Akela. Akela was Postal's publisher in Russia, and apparently had good enough relations with running scissors to get a license to create their own semi-official game, and even got to develop a full mainline entry in the series a couple years later. But we're getting off track. The expansion was titled Postal 2, Stopor Zhot, or Corkscrew Rules in English. It's known for its more controversial content, nonsensical plot, and poor quality. In 2006, it received an official English voice dub, which was, weirdly enough, released only in Japan under the title The Postal 2, From Russia With Love. It seems like the poorly translated English script was recorded by the same voice cast as the Russian version. In 2017, Corkscrew Rules received an unofficial Steam Workshop part by Evil, a member of Revival Games and creator of Nick's Cop. It's the version of the game that I played for this video. It has all the original content, it adds some minor tweaks, but most importantly it adds English subtitles. Just like the voice acting script, it's a poor translation. And there were a couple times where I had to pay attention to both the audio and the subtitles to fully understand what's going on. Also, one more thing. Due to the types of jokes this mod makes, I assume the comments section will be a shithole. Do not leave political comments. If you want to have mostly bad faith culture war arguments, go to Twitter or a political streamer. Corkscrew Rules begins with a man named Stopper, or as I will call him throughout the video, Corkscrew, waking up in a hospital. He doesn't remember who he is or what happened. As it turns out, someone stole his dong, which also for whatever reason gave him a female voice. Yeah, right. I can talk. Fuck. What's wrong with my voice? He gets kicked out, remembers that he used to be an adult movie actor, and you get your first round. To look at billboards because maybe they will help Corkscrew remember something. Going from the original release to the Steam port, you can very easily notice a few changes. Corkscrew received unique textures to make him look different than the dude. The pistol, and the machine gun later in the game, received new models, but the most interesting change is the piercing. In the original, you couldn't piss because the surgeon stole your dong, right? Well, in the Steam version you can piss, but only downwards like a woman. That's honestly pretty funny. You can also find some of the new weapons. The slingshot, which sucks, the frying pan, which is a below average melee weapon, and the sock, which is more or less just the scissors reskinned. You eventually get to the billboard. Well, the game calls them billboards, but in reality they are posters. On one corkscrew sees a woman he collaborated with, so you go visit her. The posters are right next to the liquor store. Corkscrew rules replaces health pipes with vodka. Unlike the pipes, it only restores your health to 100, not 125. In the original version there were no downsides, but in the steam port it makes your camera move diagonally. The crosshair stays in the center of the screen, but you still shoot where you would normally be looking at if you weren't drunk, so aiming is extremely difficult. Anyways, the woman is in a culture house, which for those who don't know is a type of building in some Eastern European countries, which is where you can go to view culture, movies, books, etc. Once you talk to her, Corkscrew gets eaten out, the building gets invaded and you fight until the police arrive. I was so confused as to what the game was trying to tell me here. You get the next round, to read a newspaper. Unlike every other errand based postal game, you don't get to choose in which order you want to do the errands, as the next ones unlock only after completing the last one. They're also usually very far apart, so a lot of the playtime is just going from one errand to another. Imagine if I did that, just wasted your time between errands with nothing meaningful. Boring, isn't it? You go to the library, pay or not, your choice, and it turns out it's not the newspaper, so you go to the local publisher. I'm sure whatever is on the newspaper is really funny. Apparently, Corkscrew isn't the only person that had a body part stolen. He decides to talk to a surgeon, who he thinks is the one who stole his dong. He's currently being held in prison, so you go there and talk to him. Corkscrew gets captured by the guards, and the sheriff interrogates you. Corkscrew lies, saying he's a detective investigating the case of a stolen dong. The sheriff tells you that the case might be related to a certain Muslim group. Leaving adds a hate group to your map, even though you haven't seen them before. Monday's last errand is to go home. In front of your house you get attacked, I'm not actually sure why, and Corkscrew recounts his day. His male and female voices talk to each other, almost like they are separate entities. Let's sum up the day. My name's Dude. I'm a male ex-porn star deprived of his memory balls and schlong. I'm really tired now and I wanna take some shit out badly, but I swear to continue the fight later on. I know who's my enemy. It's an evil network of surgeons that sell organs on the black market. So I have a choice. Either I find them and kill those fuckers or I forget about it and take leaks like abroad for the rest of my life. Now the good part. I learned today what lesbians experience during the orgies. That was good. That was really good. I wonder how it is with a real man. Hey, stop that bitch! Fuck this stuff! Well, it's already late. Lights out. There you go.
Corkscrew talks with himself in his head, and remembers that someone told him where the thieves might be. I'm not sure who told him that, but okay. Going outside, the apples on the ground are the default editor actor textures, which I think is funny. You get three locations to check, VPI, Funny Organ and the Oriental Medicine Center. The VPI part of the run just straight up sucks. You get directed from office to office, and you can't actually visit the guy you need to talk to until you talk to each secretary in order, which as far as I know is completely random. At the end you're told to go to Funny Organ. You go there, talk to the guy, he doesn't have a either, and when you exit you get arrested as a suspect in a video piracy case. You all can jump on a few circles and they let you out. After that, you go to the Oriental Medicine Center. You talk to a Muslim, no idea what he's talking about here, and he tells you about the cult that might have taken your possession. You go inside their headquarters, install them on their PA system, no idea what that is supposed to achieve, and they read the next hate group that you have to deal with. Corkscrew apparently wrote down the name of a politician from a computer screen. I feel like I've seen him somewhere before, but I can't put my finger on it. He asks you to get compromising posters from a group of people he dislikes. You can do that and give them to him, or you can just kill him. Whether you do it or kill him doesn't matter, because after you give him the things he asked for, he tells you that he doesn't deal with stolen organs and tells you to fuck off. You go home, Corkscrew once again talks with his female side, says that maybe he will just put a plunger between his legs, and he goes to sleep. Back in place. Maybe I should stick a plunger between my legs. At least a familiar feeling when I sleep. Sand is please. Wednesday begins with Corkscrew's female side doing just that, apparently misinterpreting what he meant. He decides to go see a criminal that he knows. He's hiding in a garage. The criminal apparently overheard drug dealers talking about the schlong. You go talk to them, and their boss says that he indeed saw something like that in customs. But before telling you what to do, you have to help them extract drugs from an elephant's ass. After doing that, which Corkscrew does in a cutscene, the boss reveals what you need to do to get your possession back. You'll need a photo, signatures of five witnesses that would confirm that you own it, and the signature of the district attorney. Animal rights protesters attack the dealers, and they get added as the final hate group. First, I got the photo. You can get it from Corkscrew's old employer. He agrees to give you a photo if you do some new work for him. After the world's lamest photo shoot, you can pick up your photo. Then you have to get the signatures. Imagine the petition I ran from Postal 2, but infinitely more annoying. You only have to get 4 signatures, which wouldn't be too bad if not for you still being in the game suit. You don't get your clothes back, and if an NPC spots you, they'll start laughing. If they're laughing, you can't ask them for a signature. You're forced to sneak to most NPCs to ask them before they start laughing, and if you get spotted, you have to walk away and wait for them to forget about you. The district attorney is spending his day in the gay club. You go there, do a dance so that the bouncer lets you through, and get the signature. Now that you have everything you need, you go to the airport and finally get your dick back. You go back to the Oriental Medicine Center, and the surgeon reveals his real identity. He's been Osama Bin Laden the whole time, and he has no intention of attaching your organ back to you. He's been stealing the best body parts from the best people in the world, to attach them to himself and become the ultimate human. Yeah, I don't get it either. Corkscrew passes out, and Osama is at least nice enough to give you his old penis. Now, bitch, you'll feel my wrath in all its might. Corkscrew wakes up with a new body part, meaning that you can finally piss just like in Postal 2. His female voice is also gone. You only have one run today, to get revenge. The local newspaper says that Osama has offered 5 million dollars for the best body parts, which made everyone start attacking each other. It's more or less just the apocalypse from Postal 2. Cats fall out of the sky just like the base game, which makes no sense here. You get to the Oriental Medicine Center, you fight bandits until the door opens, fight a few Muslims, and Corkscrew kills Bin Laden in a cutscene. Doesn't hurt, bitch. Come out, come out, wherever you are. Let's make it quick. It's not ketchup! It's boring here, I'm gonna catch some air. Next thing you know, I'm on Cop TV! <laughs> Corkscrew rules is, quite frankly, a huge waste of everybody's time. It's a waste of my time for playing it, it's a waste of Corkscrew's time because in the end he doesn't even get his cock back, Osama still has it on him, and there is no real reason to play it these days aside from sheer curiosity. It's full of jokes and references that I just don't get because I'm not Russian. Who knows, maybe this is actually the funniest thing ever, but I have no idea what it means. If you're Russian you might have some fun with it, but otherwise you got everything you probably could get out of it by watching this video.
Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed and you probably did since you're here, leave a like. And if you want more content like this in the future, subscribe. I really want to reach 1000 subs by the end of the year, so I can get money from us because I'm greedy. Okay, bye.